Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. There is a new line of German destroyers out, and it's a tech tree line even. So, um, well, let's go and have a look. Yeah, German destroyer lines are... I've sort of neglected the other one a little bit, I have to admit. I still have to finish that. Yeah, I, I, I haven't forgotten. There's still two more to go. But um, this is the tier 8 ship from the new line, which is currently in some sort of event. This is the Gustav Julius Merker. Okay, and it um, doesn't have a number or anything. That already tells you something, because this ship didn't exist. <laughs> now, from what I can tell, the ship is probably based on the 1937 destroyer design. And the 1937 designs were meant to be an improvement over the 1936 and 1936A designs. And these designs were meant to work as escort and convoy raiding destroyers. Now, they were explicitly not meant to as, as a direct response or challenge to the French scout cruisers. <laughs> uh, and they were explicitly not meant to be a hybrid cruiser destroyer, which could do neither role properly. Uh, so, in, in that regard, the Germans decided to put 150mm guns on these things. And... Uh, they did have, they did try that before, and it didn't work very well because they tended to be rather top-heavy. Because you know, a hundred millimeter turret is a way heavier than a smaller caliber. So they did make, they did make a bunch of designs out of these, and um, in the end, they couldn't reconcile the requirements of firepower, speed, range, and size. And these things were big. Uh, these were, for all intents and purposes, almost scout cruisers. But uh, yeah, in, in the end, uh, Admiral Reda came around and said, stop that, <laughs> build more of the 1936 ones. This isn't going to work with the tech that we have today. So of course, Wargaming went <laughs> and said, let's put that in the game then, shall we? So um, yeah, how am I going to say this? Okay, let, let's, look at the, let's look at the numbers, shall we? Let's compare this thing to the Z23, the actual existing tier 8 destroyer which uh, wasn't a, t a terrible ship. I'm, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of the German destroyers, but they're pretty good at being destroyer hunters. Uh, they're relatively sturdy. They've got decent range torpedoes. They've got um, hard hitting armor piercing, and uh, they usually come with sonar. Uh, not so much the Gustav Julius Merker. Uh, comes with three smoke screens. Okay, uh, no engine boost though, and no sonar. So, this being a relatively large ship, she actually gets more hit points. Uh, the speed and maneuverability is distinctly inferior to the Z-23, and that thing wasn't already the most maneuverable destroyer out there. So, uh, we're getting close to cruiser territory here with these things. Uh, the guns, this is where it gets interesting, because yes, we do have, uh, we do have 150 millimeter guns on these things. I haven't looked at what the guns these actually are, but they I don't think these are the same guns that you find on the light cruisers or on on the secondaries. But uh, I would have to I would have to look that up. Uh, it's not the usual um, Schnellfeuerkanone of some some Konstruktions, yeah. Uh, it looks like they're, they're 1936 designs and 55 caliber in length, but what exactly they're supposed to be can't really tell. I would have to check that. Uh, what we notice is that while she has five of them just like the Z23, they have a 6.2 second base reload, which is pretty long for a TA-8 destroyer. And they do have a good range with over 9 kilometers, though. Um, but even though they're 150 millimeters, they actually have the same 4% fire chance as the 128 millimeters on, um, on the Z23. So if it comes to a purely set me a fire sort of thing, uh, they, they are inferior to the 128s. This is a little curious kind of thing that you'll observe quite a bit that the uh, that the smaller caliber main guns on the German destroyers uh, tend to have the same fire chance as the larger 150 millimeter cruiser guns. Same thing with uh, things like the Nuremberg and I think the uh, the mines as well just get a four percent fire chance. I have to, have to check, but I'm, I think they also get four percent. So obviously, this being 150 millimeter guns, they get uh, they do significantly more damage against destroyers, but you have a six second reload and you don't have a reload booster that you hack you would have on a French ship. And you have not enough penetration to do anything significant with these things against anything other than destroyers. So 
Uh, while this looks nice on paper, um, I would say the guns are in are effectively inferior. And I haven't calculated the alpha damage, but the the uh, the Z23 is pretty good alpha damage as well. I would say as a gunboat, it's actually inferior to the Z23. So let's look at the torpedoes. Maybe things are different there. Now the Z23 gets the standard uh, German 530 millimeter torpedoes into quad launchers, feeling meaning quadruplet, and uh, they have a relatively okay range with seven and a half kilometers. I mean, nobody is accusing these things of stealth torpors. That's not what they're for, but they're usable. Uh, the Gustav Julius Merker it has a very curious setup. Well, first of all, she's got one quad launcher and two twin launchers. And they do less damage. They have a better range of 8.7 kilometers. Uh, they have a torpedo speed of 50 knots, which means that um, same tier French destroyers can overtake them. <laughs> uh, 50, yes, you're reading that correctly. This is um, a new low in terms of torpedo speed, because I think so far the Benham was holding the records with the worst torpedo speed at tier 9, and that thing was effectively a mine layer. Um, yeah, th these torpedoes are so slow that, uh, yeah, it does make sense though, because generally if you had a torpedo you had multiple settings on these things, so you could either configure them for higher speed, which would burn through the propellant faster, and that would reduce the range, but make it easier to hit something, or you would increase the range, but run at a slower speed, which in return would um, give you more range, but uh, you know it will take a longer time for the torpedo to get there. So it, that does make sense. What doesn't is that these 533 millimeter torpedoes take 72 seconds to reload. What in the world are we looking at here? So. Um, let's keep going before we we, find, we look at what is what is up with these two two twin launchers. Uh, the AA, well, yes, it's better. No, it's not useful. <laughs> it's your tier eight and hundred AA with a one point wave one point eight kilometer range. You might as well not have it. Uh, interestingly enough, even though the ship is massively larger, it actually has a better surface detection. So, I think what they're trying to build here is a long range hybrid torpedo gunboat kind of similar to what the french have but without the speed and uh, the torpedoes having a decent range but running at a 50 knot base speed means that you'd have to be extremely lucky to actually hit anything at that so let's let's go and, f and find out what is up with these what is up with these twin launchers um so if we look at the ship you see that the quad launcher and uh, it's, it's right here i can't zoom any further but it's right there in the middle of the ship you can kind of see it there uh, the twin launchers are side mounted, which means <laughs> that you only have six torpedoes on one side and then you have to turn a ship around. And this ship does not like turning around very much. This thing has cruiser maneuverability almost. So while you have an extremely long range of these torpedoes, you also have a dreadful speed and you have a 72 second reload and no reload booster. Uh, let's compare that thing to the Kagero. Why? Because, well, we're talking about torpedo boats, and <laughs> Kagero comes to mind at tier 8. Uh, obviously, the Kagero only gets one, gets one smoke, uh, but the Kagero is, uh, while not having, a, not having the same base speed, having three, th three engine boosts, and is significantly more maneuverable than this thing. Uh, the, Kar the Kagero, for all intents and purposes, when it comes to purely not doing damage, but purely to setting fires, has better guns. Because the Kagero, which is a Japanese destroyer, which are not known for their gun capability, unless you're talking about the Akizuki and followers, has six guns and it has, has a 5.5 second base reload and has the same 4% fire chance on the 127 millimeters. So this thing can actually set fires better than the Gustav Julius Merker and can actually dodge something, uh, although she does have to get significantly closer. The torpedoes on the Kagero, being Japanese torpedoes, are doing significantly more damage. Uh, they also have a better range. They are almost 20 knots faster. They have twice the flooding chance and they reload faster. <laughs> and it's the same amount and I can launch them all over one side and don't have to turn the Kagero around. Uh, I mean, we don't need to talk about the base, uh, about the concealment, but um, uh, this is... Well, 
let me just put it that way. Um, Admiral Reda may have been onto something when he told the designers to stop this and keep going back to what they were doing before. Uh, this this is a bit rubbish. And I, I'm really sorry to say that, but <laughs> I, I am very much unconvinced by this ship. All right. Um, let, let's, keep, let's keep looking what we can do. So... The first slot, we probably have, or we pretty much have to put in Terra Traverse, because I think the base Terra Traverse was, what, 12 degrees per second or something? Was it? Uh, let's get back to the comparison just quickly. Uh, yes, it was. So 12 degrees per second is not enough for a gunboat, even especially for a gunboat destroyer. So uh, we'll put the main battery Traverse in here, even, uh, even though the um, torpedo reload would make a lot of sense, but we don't get the torpedo reload in these things. Uh, the if you want to go with concealment given that the base concealment is actually not too bad then um you're gonna have to sacrifice the steering gear mod in the third slot which means that you actually need to take the steering gear mod in the second slot because uh, these things don't like to turn very much and that means we cannot take the propulsion mod in the second slot in terms of uh, elite, elite Operator, yes, you can get the Torpedo Reload down by 3%. No, it's not going to make an awful lot of difference because 72 seconds is a freaking ages. <laughs> so <laughs> it takes forever for them to reload. Uh, so Elite Gun Operator it is, which makes sense, which gets the reload down a little bit and get the Traverse up as well. Uh, so with all that, we're landing with something that is, by all intents and purposes, a scout cruiser. So this is exactly the thing that the Germans were trying to avoid building. It's neither a destroyer nor a cruiser, and it's not good at either role of them. <laughs> uh, we do get the turn time down to 4.36 seconds, which is too much in my opinion for a destroyer, but um, it, it's sort of workable. We get the gun reload down to six seconds, which is pretty, which is okay, right? And these are 150 millimeter guns. So with that setup, we actually starting to look at, reason, at a reasonable amount of uh, firepower. Uh, well, the other problem, obviously, being that this this is almost cruiser size. Now you can't you have three smoke generators, which is great, but you also have tier eight, where everything else has a radar. <laughs> the torpedoes are all but useless, um, uh, except for meme purposes, where you donk, donk them in the general direction, and half the half the battle later, they actually end up hitting something <laughs> because they would they they run so slowly that it takes forever to get there. Um, and the surface detection at 5.8 is nowhere near best in class, but it's actually workable. Now, you could go and forego the surface detection and just um, uh, really have cruiser detection on this thing as well. The problem is, um, there, is a sh there are certain ship classes around that are brand new. And um, we now have two classes of ship firing a certain sort of ammunition that uh, cannot overpenetrate destroyers. So, yeah, um, this thing has to face off against Vittorio Venetos and, um, and, and Italian cruisers and Clevelands and things like that. And if you get spotted <laughs> and people start shooting at you, uh, these 20,000 hit points are not going to last you very, very long. So, um, I I'm really struggling to find something nice to say about this ship. Anyway. Let's look at the camo. You can get the historical camo, which uh, looks interesting. I don't think I've seen these brown tones very much, but um, it would give you main battery range, torpedo range, <laughs> uh, traverse speed and surface detection. So yes, all good things. And you probably, you probably want that if you want to keep playing this ship. Uh, so that's definitely worth it. Uh, I'm not too certain about this, the stealth build here. It's just that the surface detection without it means that you really have no option of contesting caps early because you don't have the maneuverability to dodge very very well and you don't have the utility to deal with enemy destroyers because you don't have a sonar. Um, you do have the smoke screens which are quite useful but then again um, with the sheer amount of radars around it's uh, it's easy to it it, it can, can come in useful but not always so you don't have the speed or the engine boost for early cap control and you don't have the firepower for long-range gunboating because, well, you don't set enough fires with these things, honestly. And you don't have the reload for a 4% fire chance to make that work. And the torpedoes are not going to flood anybody. So what are we doing with them then? Well, let's put a commander in there. Um, I have gone because the... Uh, if, we, if we look at... If we take a very, very quick look uh, into the other tiers. So we've got the tier 7, which is the Z31 which has, I think, 
that, that that's the one, right? Yeah, the Leibrecht Mass was the one that was there before, uh, which also gets the which also gets the 150 mils and uh, also gets the at least gets two quad launchers and not this weird setup, but also has the 50 knots and the 72 second reload. So as torpedo bolts, they're pretty useless. And then at tier nine, we have the Felix Schulz, which by all intents and purposes looks like a cruiser already <laughs> at this size. It's a massive boat. Uh, and uh, yeah, once again gets the 150 mils and gets the torpedoes, which finally, finally reload a little bit faster than the other ones, but are still having the 50 second base speed. So uh, I, I'm going to do a full run once we see everything up to tier 10, I think. Well, from If we're going after PC, it's probably going to be the Elbing at tier 10, but uh, we will find out. Um, anyway, back to this thing. So yeah, uh, oh, that, that's why I wanted to tell you. So the Felix Schultz actually gets a second ship skill at tier nine, finally, uh, and does get the defensive AA, which is uh, if that thing, yeah, that thing doesn't have any AA, so it's not gonna make a huge difference. It's okay, it's a little bit nice, but uh, you're at tier nine, it's, you're not gonna do an awful lot with that. Uh, but uh, regardless, I have uh, provisional really put the battlefield support in there for an additional defensive AA, which we can't use yet. Uh, preheating makes sense. I've put the air defense expert in, you know, because you know, if you get the defensive AA, you may as well use it. Um, I have Daredevil, obviously. Uh, exploit weakness, yeah, but with these torpedoes, there's no, there's not really a great option, right? You, you don't have to use the recon because you don't get the hydro, and the generalist, yeah, you can take it, but um, for, for, don't feel it's a hugely valuable for something that's not a battleship. Uh, fully prepared because there's no other options and obviously the Mistweaver because you have three smoke screens so you make make good use of them right for now uh, let's put sun camo on and get into a game first battle we're in epicenter pacific islands and i've picked epicenter battles precisely because you know you're in a destroyer and you're technically in a german destroyer so i was really really curious to see what you could get up to in a scenario where you cannot just sit there at nine kilometer range and, and shoot at other things, but you are actually necessarily having to go into the center. <laughs> we are up against Bismarck, Massa, the Nagato, Kutuzov, Zara, and two other German destroyers, so uh, of the same tier. So um, let's, uh, let's see what we can get ourselves into here. But yeah, uh, the obvious game, the obvious play that you want to do with these things would be, you know, long range and just spam HE, which you're not particularly good at, and hope that somebody runs in your torpedoes, because they're they're running at 50 knots, which means that um, they're, effective, they're effectively sending a letter ahead a couple of days that there's going to be torpedoes in the water, um, and if you if you care to avoid them. Right, no, so no engine boost, so um, this is all we're going to get. With all the, all the skills, bells and whistles, she almost has 38 knots, which isn't dreadful, but um, isn't also great. And uh, we are going to head straight for the center. So our task, uh, our mission, shall we choose to accept it, and I don't see how we have a choice, is to grab the center cup. Because this is epicenter, and the center cup gives you six points. And uh, we're in a destroyer, and we've got 150 millimeter guns. So why not? Why wouldn't we? And we've got three smoke screens. So that's, that's sort of the saving grace here, almost. Uh, it, it curiously looks like the enemy team is not interested in cupping, though because we're already grabbing the middle ring, we're not losing the outer, so there's not an awful lot of enemy team in the outer ring. Uh, there's not more than two ships of the enemy team in the outer ring, and it looks like they're not coming into the center ring either, so the enemy team is not particularly interested in getting into the capture circle. I would have expected these two German destroyers to show up here, but, uh, well, oh, there's one of them, okay. So uh, this, is, this is where it gets funky with the torpedoes. Uh, because you have these very very narrow uh, lines, but for now we don't need to use the torpedoes. So we see it, we can see him, so we can start shooting at him. And and this is something that the guns are definitely doing. They are doing a lot of damage. So against destroyers, obviously 150 millimeter guns uh, is a good thing to have if you can hit them. But yeah, there comes the first problem. That's a Zara shooting at me. <laughs> so I'm a full reverse. Uh, bow in towards the Zara and smoke up because I don't want Zara shooting at me. And there are probably torpedoes in the water. Uh, so yeah, I'm already I'm, a, I'm already using my first heal here because I've been already taking shots from something that is actually qualified at shooting destroyers with like a cruiser, you know, those things. That's what they were meant for. Uh, yeah, at this ranges I can't even get full pens anymore at the destroyer, 
and uh, the torpedo angles are a bit wonky because only the side mounted twin launchers have the good angles whereas the quad uh, the center mounted quad launcher has has um, pretty poor angles so yeah you can only get six uh, uh, six torpedoes away on one side and then the other two go the other side but for now, uh, we've chased the enemy destroyer out, we have done a little bit of damage, we've used our first heal and we're still 4000 hit points down and we're spotted again. Uh, come on, come on, get down, concealment, this is why I'm in a concealment build, yeah, there, come the, there comes the semi armor piercing again, and there come, I think, Sarah Torps, oh, there comes the Kutus off as well, and um, <laughs> I, I totally planned that, uh, that torpedo, I knew that didn't have range, okay. Uh, intentionally not firing my guns, uh, just donking some torpedoes in the general direction of this group and then trying very slowly to turn the ship around so I can drop the other twin launcher from the other side. Now they do have the range to get there, but unless these battleships are completely oblivious <laughs> and sailing in straight lines and not paying any attention uh, to these torpedoes that are announcing their, uh, their upcoming presence with bells and whistles, nobody should be running into those. Uh, over to the high explosive. <laughs> uh, and it's even a bit smart. <laughs> <It's> hydro. <laughs> How are you? How do you mess that up? All right, smoke up and see if we can sink the Bismarck <laughs> with high explosive shells. <laughs> I think yeah. Okay, the Kansas takes them out. Oh dear. Back to the armor piercing. Now, we've got the Zara and the Kutuzov to shoot at, but the Kutuzov is dodging, whereas the Zara is sitting there stationary. So, uh, let's see what these 150s are doing against the Zara. Not an awful lot, <laughs> even at full broadside. Uh, this, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be great. So, let's send some some sea mines into his into his general direction and then get back, back behind the island, because that Zara, yeah, there he comes again. And the Kutuzov as well have shown an unwelcome, um, unwelcome propensity of starting to shoot at me whenever I'm, I'm spotted. There's a Massachusetts who might run into my sea mines by accident, but um, let's try to get unspotted by just not being, by well, being behind the island and not being in line of fire. And uh, we got our one of our twin launchers uh, uh, of cooldown actually, uh, but I think yeah, these torpedoes are probably a bust. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I think the Massachusetts is actually running into them. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. No, it's dodging them. Yeah, he dodged them. Okay, Z23, full on reverse. Uh, acceleration isn't great because we can't use the propulsion mod. Uh, shots out and um, I might have to smoke up again here because the Kutuzov and the, uh, the Zara are once again trying very, very hard to sink me, which, well, it's, it's what they're for because they're cruisers. And I'm in a destroyer, technically. And there comes some torpedoes, probably the Z torpedoes. That's why I'm not hanging around inside the smoke screen because, well, smoke screens, Torpedoes, you know how the, how the story goes, but uh, at least we have the gunpowder to deter the Z-23. I mean, if he was using his guns instead of trying to torpedo me, that would have probably been a different story. But look at these guys, they are nothing but persistent. And I'm spotted again. Uh, and they are really trying hard to, 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 get, me, to get me dead. Yeah, there they come again. <laughs> okay, that was a good one, because I couldn't turn in time. But I'm not firing my guns, I'm just waiting for the concealment to, to do its thing. Yep, there comes the semi-armor piercing, there comes the armor piercing from the Kutuzov, and these buggers are even blind firing at me. So uh, I'm down to 2,500 hit points. I'm out of heals at this point, by the way. I'm just more, I'm just mentioning that. So right now I'm a torpedo boat. But I'm not really a torpedo boat, right, am I? I'm a mine layer. <laughs> so let's see if there's anything we can do with our sea mines. There's a Nagato. Mm. Well, the, the one saving grace probably that these things has is that literally nobody expects them to come because you can torpedo somebody from the other end of the map with these things. So let's send them in the general direction of the Nagato and uh, see if he's paying attention. But yeah, I'm not going to use my guns anymore because uh, I don't have any more hit points and <laughs> I cannot get spotted anymore. But uh, we've held the center cup, so uh, since the enemy... Uh, to the, uh, I don't even know where the other, uh, the other Z is. Oh, he's somewhere at the, at the edge of the map, yeah. And uh, because the, uh, uh, some more torpedoes out, I think my, oh no, I've got a torpedo hit on the Nagato. <laughs> oh well, all right, there's the Zara and the Massa, so this might work again, but I think before my torpedoes reload, we're actually running out of, uh, we're actually going to win on, po yeah, we're not going to be able to torpedo them because we're just going to take over and win on points, but, um, yeah, uh, 39,000 points of damage is not a great amount for um for a tier eight i mean it's okay i guess and we've we've held the center cup 
Uh, which, by the way, if one of the Zs had decided to just, you know, come a bit closer and hydro me and just shoot me, and especially that the cruisers were doing their job, but anyway, let's do it again. And will you know it? We're back in an epicenter mode. Uh, this time it's Frozen Shelter, which is actually a good epicenter uh, map because it's got plenty of islands to hide behind. We are up against um, something that I dimly associate with breakfast cereal. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> uh, I, I do remember that. Um, uh, we once again top tier, so we haven't even gone, gotten into things like Rigas or 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 uh, other tier nine things like Rhones or, or like Seattle's and ugh, Brindisi's, <laughs> Lepantos. <ugh. laughs> anyway, uh, none of that. Uh, we have Nagato. Well, we do have a Caracciolo, so that's a tier a tier seven. Colorado Maya, not bad. Uh, a York, okay, and the Le Terrible, so the French premium uh, thing that I was specifically designed not to deal with. So let's see how that turns out then, shall we? <laughs> uh, I, I don't even want to know what happens if a carrier is in the game, because you don't have the speed or maneuverability to even try dodging torpedoes. You're just going to be murdered outright, unless you put the smoke, obviously. But um, uh, anyway, we will we'll be making our way slowly <laughs> into the center cup. And uh, we do have a Helena with us, which is good because that's a pretty decent ship. And there's only one destroyer on your enemy team. So the center cup hopefully should be ours, excuse me. Uh, we do have a Kagero, which is by all intents and purposes better in pretty much all regards than what I'm trying to do, except for shooting at enemy destroyers. But uh, then again, if you wanted to hunt enemy destroyers, you'd be in a Z-23 <laughs> or in a cruiser, i.e. in ships that are actually designed for the purpose, not this thing. So uh, let's, uh, at least this time the, this time around, the enemy team is, and that is a Le Terrible, so he's going to be in the center cup before I can even sneeze or even think about getting into the center cup. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because that thing is actually proper quick. So let's see what he's up to. And if we can, if we, if we get both Kagura and me into the center cup, the Kagura is probably faster than me with the engine boost up, then uh, we should be able to do something decent around here. All right, uh, he's not spotted. I'm not going to drop my sea mines because these things are taking forever to reload. There he is. Hello. Because uh, his concealment is even worse than mine. So let's uh, smoke up, dodge these torpedoes that I didn't need Hydra to see coming, and start shooting at the Le Terrible. And because I'm in smoke, the Le Terrible isn't firing back, but it's just going backwards and trying to dodge these things. So uh, that's all good. But uh, there's once again uh, semi armor piercing coming, and this time it's battleship semi armor piercing, if I'm not mistaken, because that's probably the Caracciolo. And he can, since he can't see me, uh, if the Kagero got himself spotted, he's probably been in, a, in an awful lot of trouble. But we have, the Kagero has survived, he, he might be sitting in my smoke screen, honestly. And we have inflicted some pain on Le Terrible, although now he's speeding up, which means, yeah, he's been sitting in my smoke screen. That, that is really nice, actually, to see that happening. Like, you know. Uh, so somebody seeing a smoke screen and making use of it. No, not many people do that. Okay. Um, there's the Maya, but he's lost an awful lot of health. Terrible is a bit of the problem here. So uh, the Frenchman needs to die. Ah, there comes some shots in from the other side, shooting off my turret. And uh, what that might have been the Caracciolo. So if that was the Caracciolo, he's got the, he's got the same ammo piercing reloaded. So I don't want to be spotted. So I'm just going to drunk my sea mines into the water in the general direction of the enemy team in the hope that somebody is, is paying this, just not enough attention and gets them, gets hit by them. Um, you can use the torpedo indicators to, uh, to find out where the enemy ships are. And I, I have the Le Terrible spotted and you can see where they're going. But now I managed to get out of the spotting range and just in time to dodge some high explosive shells. Probably coming in from the Nagato, so let's smoke up again. And we managed to hit the... <laughs> All right, Mr. Frenchman, uh, once again, I do not want to sit in my smoke screen. And <laughs> another torpedo of it. <laughs> all right, I don't have all my guns, but that thing outguns me. So I do have to be a little bit careful here. And yeah, he starts, uh, so he, he's had enough. He's in for a gunfight. And there can actually come his torpedoes, which is why I'm no longer sitting in my smoke screen, even though it's not yet dissipated. But uh, yeah, cannot underestimate the guns on, on Le Terrible. Now, uh, if he knows how to shoot uh, and isn't sitting broadside on and yeah, he missed his, he missed that salvo So his, his rapid reload should almost be done and he already had lost the, uh, had lost a bit of health So even without some assistance, I can actually take him on um, I wouldn't I wouldn't risk that usually because if uh, if he had a bit of if he had a bit better aim and uh, He would have been able to, to probably take me out with his guns and um, 
And uh, there comes the York. Oh, York. Okay. York shooting high explosive. That's also unpleasant. If somebody realizes that you should, high exp should, should shoot high explosive in these things. So let's drop some more sea mines in the general direction of that Italian over there. And uh, even though the high explosive from the York is really nasty, the, the semi-armor piercing from the Caracciolo is even worse. So <laughs> I'm not going to give broadside to that battleship. I know very well what happens if you do that in a destroyer. I'm just trying to get unspotted again. I'm just getting behind, getting the island between myself and the York. Uh, I think the Caracciolo has been paying attention. So some more sea mines in the general direction of that Nagato over there. Uh, yeah, I think the Caracciolo has been paying attention. So these are probably not gonna hit. Uh, let's see if we can um, if we can do something about the Nagato then. So high explosive out, uh, smoke up, and uh, just generally not still in, sit, sit not sit still in our smoke screen. Now the high explosive isn't gonna do anything, but the armor piercing at this range isn't gonna do anything either. Oh, Nelson's coming along. Yeah, you used the smoke screen. Oh, ow! You used that smoke screen too. Who blind fired me there? That must have been uh, that must have been the breakfast the breakfast tiger. Uh, okay, we might be actually getting a torpedo hit on the uh, on the Nagato. Not sure, but we have set a fire! Hooray! <laughs> ah, there's the York again. Okay, time to vacate this spot and get the heck out of there. Um, over to the armor piercing. Yeah, our torpedoes have missed, and of course, insta fire from the York. One hit, one fire. So I do need to damage on that because I don't have the hit points. Uh, let's drop some. No, he's stopping. So slowing down some torpedoes in his way and just try to duke. Ah, oh, there comes the Caracciolo. And uh, even though I think that was armor piercing, uh, I, I was so little. I was so low on hit points that there was really no chance of doing something. But uh, we've killed the French destroyer and we've managed to hold the center cut for quite a while. So even though we've only done once again forty thousand points of damage, we've been somewhat useful to our team. Um, yeah, uh, and I think these are these are our sea mines, are they? So we may be able to, if we're lucky. Uh... <laughs> How are people this oblivious? These things take fifty knots. They 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 call ahead. They make a reservation. They're saying we would like to impact on your ship. Uh, next Saturday, 8 o'clock, would that be convenient for you? <laughs> okay, but we're holding two out of the, almost three out of the cup. Uh, the breakfast tiger takes out the Nagato. <laughs> but I think our points lead is probably sufficient. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> our points lead is probably sufficient that uh, if, if my team isn't completely screwing this up, uh, that, that, yeah, and it's, it's 30 seconds left, and, um, I mean, the Caracciolo is a great brawler, but the Nagato is a pretty sturdy ship as well, so, um, uh, and, and the other battleship is, is somewhere, somewhere completely outside, so, <laughs> uh, even though he is cupping something back, I, I think they're not going to be have the time to do this, so, yeah, um, the German scout cruisers, destroyers thing that were in, that Admiral Reda do, uh, cancelled for a pretty good reason. Um, they should have probably remained cancelled, at least so far. So I haven't tried the tier 7, but it doesn't look much better than this. <laughs> and I haven't tried the tier 9 yet, but that looks like Kabar uh, Kabarovsk fanfic, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I'm thinking of that thing yet. Uh, but yeah, um, if you want to play a cruiser, there are plenty of good cru cru cruisers out there at tier 8. Actually, if you want to play a cruiser that has lots of good 150mm guns and... Um, actually has a smoke screen and uh, has probably torpedoes that are at least as useful as this thing, you could play in Edinburgh. Now, I'm not accusing the Edinburgh of being a great ship. In fact, I hated the Edinburgh <laughs> with an absolute passion to the point that I almost free expeed over it. Um, it's probably better than this thing. So, yeah, I'm not so sure about these. Uh, like I said, I might be a bit overly critical here and uh, they might work pretty well at long range like you you're just sitting extreme range shooting a bit of high explosive dunking a couple of sea mines into the water and and as you can see you know very obviously just because these these things are <laughs> are, sa are sailing at are sailing at the leisurely speed of the base speed that a french destroyer would would go through the waves uh, you can still perfectly fine hit enemy ships because you know <laughs> Aliens, but um, yeah, uh, don't expect too much from these ships. I think uh, very pretty singular focus, not much, not much utility, and um, 
I, I think I agree with Admiral Reda here that uh, they should have probably been remaining in the drawer. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.